All right, everyone, I am here, barely. I do have COVID. Um, it's been a few days, so I started noticing symptoms Saturday afternoon after I got off the cruise. But I'm on medication and I am feeling much better than I was, but I still have symptoms. I still don't feel great, so anyway. Um, I am going to uh, try to find this feed on my other Facebook account if I can. Streamlabs has some chat features where you can actually put chats in um, uh, this. Uh, so I have this chat box set right here in this corner. And you can do that for some things like YouTube and Twitch and things like that. But apparently uh, Facebook, it doesn't work that way. I would have to load up another program and do a bunch of other stuff. And I am just not ready to do that. So, so right now I have a chat box there, but no, no chat. Now, Streamlabs itself allows me to see whatever chat is coming in um, on the side. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to interact with it, so I wanted to make sure that I could uh, get to it on my phone. I'm just going to cover a few things today. So my main idea was that I would cover my vacation plans for next summer because we plan on doing another cruise and this will be an Alaskan cruise. And the uh, coming fall registration that's coming up for um, both my kids, my 20 year old and my 17 year old. Uh, and I, I'm also going to be getting a new phone for my birthday. So I'll need to select that. Um, I started doing reactions for Dairy Girls. I'm trying, I have four of them uploaded and ready to go already and I'm trying to publish one a day and make sure that I have everything ready for it publish it um, I'm doing okay at keeping them from getting blocked the but they are being blocked in um, I think it's Ireland the UK Isle of Man and I think one other place so so um, I should probably look those up later on to see what the regulations are. But I'm assuming because of where that video is from and what it's covering, that is probably the main reason why it is being blocked in those countries. I was going to also try to stream in YouTube and on Facebook at the same time, like I did at the beginning. But... It, um, while it's being used on Streamlabs, it does not, it does not, um, let me use the same camera on YouTube. So what I may do if I want to keep, um, streaming on both, uh, venues is I may next time, uh, stream my Facebook through my phone, my phone, which is right here, and stream on YouTube using Streamlabs. So that may be what I do. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to go in pretty much the order that I said. My next summer vacation, the fall registration, selecting a new phone, and then whatever else that I have coming up. Um, oh, and I wanted to add a link. Uh, oh, I can't do it on here, can I? Well, I probably could. I just have to open Facebook on my computer. So let's do that. I'm going to open Facebook. And I don't have it set up right now. I could easily set up a, a share screen to share what um, I'm looking at on here. But I don't have that set up right now. And I don't honestly feel like doing that right now. So... I will just go to Facebook and try to find this. That way I can just copy and paste this link to my uh, Dairy Girls. 
if you want to see that or you're interested in Dairy Girls, if you have not watched Dairy Girls, um, you can watch my reaction videos, but there will definitely be lots of spoilers. So if you do not like spoilers, then go and watch the show first and then and then watch my reaction videos. If you don't care about spoilers or if you're doing like I do sometimes, if I'm introducing myself to a show that I'm not sure if I want to watch it or not, sometimes I will intentionally go look for reaction videos and watch a few reaction videos before I decide to watch it. Um, Dairy Girls is a, um, it's a comedy show, uh, set in Northern Ireland in the 90s during the Troubles, um, and, uh, there, there's a lot of satire, there's a lot of, um, stereotype, uh, uh, discussions and things like that, there, but it is, it is very funny. I laugh so much during that, at least most of them. There's a couple of them where they're about more heavy topics. It's still pretty funny. They recently came out with a teaser trailer for Handmaid's Tale. They also came out with um, a new trailer for House of the Dragon, and I plan on reacting to both of those shows, but I don't plan on reacting to both of the uh, trailers. I plan on reacting to the Handmaid's Tale trailer, and that because I am um, trying to figure out as much as I can about what might be happening in the coming season, I am probably going to uh, go ahead and do a reaction and then do like a little like one section at a time of trying to figure out what is this section actually trying to say. Um, but I don't plan on doing that with the House of Dragon trailer, but there is another video that they have that they've put out for House of the Dragon with the actors and stuff and I do want to go over that and I'm not sure exactly what kind of reaction I will do for it but but some kind it will be set up different than the than the reaction I do for the Handmaid's Tale trailer just because it's a different kind of thing it's a different setup and when I watched the trailer for House of the Dragon. The reason that I don't really intend to do a reaction for that is because, um, I don't know, I didn't feel like I was really reacting to it a lot, and I didn't feel like the trailer revealed more than I know already. I've read the books, and I have this, I have this issue. I have a traumatic brain injury, which causes my short-term memory to be a problem and so there are plenty of times where I can watch a movie or a show and um, and two weeks lead later I won't remember a lot of it like I'll remember probably the gist and I'll remember little bits and pieces and once I start watching it um, certain scenes will probably like cue me in and help me to start remembering um, but if I haven't watched it a whole bunch, then I probably have not retained it long term very well. So, so it actually results in this kind of cool thing. If, if you like this kind of thing is that I can watch another, I can watch a movie the second time and it's almost like I never watched it the first time. I may not remember watching it for a while and even if I do remember it I, there's going to be like a lot of stuff that I forgot about and so and so I actually will get surprises and stuff but um, I have read through the book for House of Dragon and that's not what the book is called but um, I, my brain is not on fully functioning right now because of COVID but but um, I have gone over that at least twice and I use audible so I don't physically read it but I use audible and listen to it and um, I've gone through it twice at least fully and uh, sometimes I'll back it up and play more again and things like that um, so I have gotten a decent amount of information at least on what happens in the books now my understanding 
is that not everything is going to follow the books, which is the way that it usually goes. There's there's very few um, shows or movies that I've seen where the content in the book is fully addressed and um, uh, fully followed exactly as it is in the book. And, and I think that when you do that, a lot of times it makes it very hard to have like really good drama. But like I said, it just, it feels like I have, I, I have a decent amount of knowledge that I kind of know most of what I have a decent idea of what most of the trailer is. It doesn't feel like it reveals a lot new to me. Plus they had the they had a previous thing that they sent out a while back that had a lot of the same imagery but didn't have a lot of the talking. So so it's like they took that same imagery but they added video footage and and actual speaking to it so that it's more filled in. Um but it doesn't feel all that new and fresh to me, so I didn't want to really do a um, a reaction on that. I think that the other piece that I am going to do a reaction on will provide plenty for me to talk about and for me to um, consider. Anyway, the, uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is... Um, my next summer vacation. So, so what we did this summer, we, we went on a cruise to, um, to the Caribbean, <coughs> Puerto Rico, uh, the Dominican Republic, and Grand Turks, and that was a seven-day cruise. I think when we go next summer, when we go on the Alaskan cruise, I think we're going to do another seven-day cruise. But we're going to uh, go on that from the other side of the country, of course. Now, I have family in Washington State, so um, so most likely I will come into either Washington or Vancouver, and at some point we will visit, visit family in Washington. They do a summer family picnic or something like that, and um, I am hoping that I can get the schedule all arranged so that I can go to that family picnic and go on the cruise um, uh, kind of back to back one right after the other or one year after the other and not you know not miss it this year so that would be fun and um, and in the meantime we have a a um, vacation uh, resort that we like to go to in Canada right above Vancouver called Whistler. Whistler is gorgeous. It is beautiful and the resort we go to is beautiful so most likely we'll probably take at least a few days over there and we will either have the cruise before going to Whistler or after going to Whistler and that way we can stay and enjoy it for a little while because it is very beautiful the people there are lovely so I will definitely be looking forward to it now I have never been to Alaska the furthest north I have ever been is Whistler Canada so the first thing that I needed to do when we decided to go on a cruise to Alaska is um, look up some things about the cruise ships because we like to go to the pool not for like a long time but we like to go to the pools it doesn't have to be super fancy but we do like fancy sometimes so but my big concern is we're from Florida we are used to Florida weather Florida weather is like between the 60s and the 80s almost all year round so so going down to uh, Alaska weather with you know a breeze blowing every now and then mountain air coming in all of that even though it's summer it's Alaska summer it's gonna be um, I'm imagining it will be quite a bit colder than what I am used to and especially for summer I want to make sure that whatever pool we go to that there is some heat 
that we are not going to freeze our buns off because it's just not something. I, I am not used to Washington water. When we go in the water in Washington, it is freezing, freezing to me. My family from Washington, they're used to it, so they can do that, and it's no problem. It's no big deal for them, but for me, it is too much. And so I am hoping that I can find a nice cruise ship that has the seven day um, cruise that will take me. I only want to, I, I only want to go to, I'd prefer to stick to like three, three um, ports of call. Um, and a lot of them that I was looking at at first had about three ports of call, but then several of them that I've been looking at lately had a lot more. And I don't want to be stopping at a port every single day, but I think three is a reasonable number. Three, maybe four. And, um, and I would like a, an enclosed pool. Um, I would like a semi-heated pool and I know that their water, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that their water will be significantly colder than what I'm used to in Florida. Um, but I'm hoping that I can get used to it enough. And if I can't, then there's always the hot tub. Um, when we were in Whistler, Canada in the winter, we actually went into the hot tub, which was outside. And, um, and that was interesting. It wasn't really that bad. It wasn't that bad. You know, you're in the nice, warm, hot, hot tub. And then you only come out for a little while, um, to the outside air in between. So, so it's not really that bad. It like, it didn't even seem, you know how jumping into cold water initially feels really, really shocking, but then you get used to it. It didn't even feel like that, like getting from the hot, hot, um, hot tub water into the outdoor air did not feel as shocking as jumping into cold water. So, so that was at least pleasant. Um, and I have been looking at some of the reviews from people who have gone on Alaskan cruises and some of them, um, some of them complained of the, uh, of the indoor ones actually being a little too cold and they felt better in the outdoor ones. And some of them felt better just going in the hot tub and some of them were perfectly fine with the indoor ones. I did find that some of the indoor uh, pools, which they're not, I think some of them are not necessarily just indoor pools. It's more like, uh, some of them have a, um, retractable roof that can actually go, um, over the top of the cruise ship to, uh, close off the top of the, the pool, which I, I think is a great idea. And, and that, allows the glass to allow the sunshine to come down in there without ha without actually being directly outside and exposed to all the wind and everything so uh, so that's good but uh, another thing that I noticed is that some of those um, some of those enclosed pools um, they call the they call that glass enclosure uh, pool a solarium a solarium pool and some of them are supposed to be set up so that they are adults only, which is fine because me and Craig are the only ones planning on going because my kids don't like cruises and, be, well, Ben might be okay with one, but we don't plan on taking Ben anyway. Ben's old enough that if, if he really wants to go on a cruise, he's going to have to come up with the money on his own and do it. Talon hates cruises he is afraid of them. He doesn't like them. He doesn't want anything to do with them. So, so we're not going to subject him to that kind of terror. You would be surprised the things that Taylin sees as very uncomfortable and fearful and things like that, that I think most people would look at as fun or nice, or at least as normal and not scary. So, 
So, yeah, there's a variety of things that Talon would take almost as torture that that other people might not necessarily. But Talon is, um, Talon is neurodiverse. But yeah, it says a, a lot of them are adults only, which is fine. But it also says that a lot of them are for like upper tier people, people that are in a suite. And we do not plan on getting in a suite unless the suites are almost the same amount as the, as the balcony rooms. We do plan on getting in a balcony because it just frankly sucks to be in one of those smaller rooms that has barely any room and the balcony rooms at least have a little space. So, so we do plan on getting a balcony room. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it says that it, they're usually for like people with suites, people with like an upper level, uh, uh, VIP something or another, or they're in some club or something like that, that gets them into those privileged areas. But then some of them said that they are open to other people. And some of them also said that even the ones that are supposed to be for a select few people, they will sometimes open up for the general public uh, during different parts of the day. So, so we'll see. I, I want to look more into it to get a good idea of, of I, I want to look more into it to find one that actually has one available throughout the cruise for whoever, rather than closing it off only to those uh, very top-notch uh, positions. I am going to ask, um, this is for people who have any um, impression, who have any experience with these cruises, what you think is a good-sized cruise ship. Um, being that we're going to Alaska this time instead of the Bahamas, I don't know if that's going to be different, but I, I, I imagine that there might be some difference in like what people envision as a good size cruise ship for that kind of cruise. So I'm going to ask that on here. And of course, we're not seeing all of Alaska. We're just seeing little teeny bits and pieces here and there on the fringes of Alaska on, you know, that little strip that goes down the Canada border. But it's just a question I'm proposing because it's something I'm wondering. That last cruise ship we went on can hold, I think they said up to 7,000 people and they had it pretty much maxed. It had 6,000 something people. And uh, yeah, it was a lot, but I still had tons of fun even though there were a lot of people on it. It's just, um, it also had I think a lot more walking and stuff walking and going up and down steps and things like that to avoid the elevators like most of the time the elevators were okay but there are certain times like when you first get on when you are getting off and when certain events occur that the elevators are very um, crowded and it takes forever to get in an elevator that isn't full to get on so Anyway, next thing that I'm going to talk about is the fall registration. So my oldest kid should be going to EF EFSC this fall full time. And the last time he was in EFSC, he was going dual enrollment and he was having issues. He failed a couple classes. He wanted to withdraw from a class. He was... Um, he was really struggling with um, how things were going at school. I think between doing college classes and doing high school classes and dealing with a much, um, a much more involved theater um, thing that he was doing and other stuff that was going on, he was very overwhelmed and he had, um, he had some issues and it caused a lot of problems. So... So he's got a handful of bad grades from that time period. We're hoping that with him not being in high school and him only being in college. Um, the other thing was that um, all of those classes that he failed in were classes where we were trying to get him registered and signed up and everything. 
in time and for one reason or another it took it took too long and um, getting him registered for classes and getting his books so his books came in late and he ended up signing up at the last minute for classes and missed certain assignments and missed the ability to do some of the assignments because of not having the book right away and which just started him off on the wrong foot and and he never never got back um, but also with everything else that was going on he just he was just in a bad way and we're hoping that it will be better this time um, but yeah we, he's got um, he just requested his transcripts and we're hoping that those get there soon because we need to get him registered for classes and we need to get the other one registered for classes too so so trying to get the transcripts from for both kids has been an issue has been problematic because they because the literature that they gave us for kids that are doing dual enrollment made it sound like the college themselves are supposed to um, get the transcripts themselves and then when we went in there to actually speak to somebody at EFSC they said oh no 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 you have to go to the school get the transcripts and bring them over here so I did finally do that and then I tried to bring the transcripts in the Friday before we went on the cruise and I had forgotten that EFSC closes on Fridays so I couldn't do anything on Friday, so I had to wait. And then we got off of the cruise, and and we're all sick. Well, me and Craig are sick, so I couldn't bring the transcripts then either. So I'm still waiting to get better before I can bring in the transcripts. And I'm hoping that by I'm hoping that by Monday or Tuesday I'm well enough to get them in without being contagious. We'll see. I mean, I had heard rumors that it was supposed to be five days, five days, and then you're not contagious anymore. But the information that we read recently does not say that. So, so I don't know. We'll see. But I need to find a way to get it to them soon. And then... And neither of them can register until those transcripts are in. As far as I know, both of them have done their orientation. So that's what we're waiting on. Transcripts, then they can register. Talon, I think we have a good idea of what classes that they what, that they should take. The problem is that Talon, Talon pretty much needs to go to the Palm Bay campus unless they're taking an online course, which I don't think is a good idea because online courses take a lot of self-discipline and um, with school going on also I don't think that's the kind of uh, pressure I need to be putting on them especially after what happened with Ben so I, I apologize that I am taking so long to get everything out I'm just like cloudy head it's just gonna take a little longer <coughs> but but we're thinking Talon is going to need a math class. We just have to figure out what math class they're starting, and we can't find that out until they get their transcripts, which have their SAT scores in them, so they can indicate what class they can start in. And um, I am pretty sure they at least can skip intermediate and algebra, but I think they are probably going to have to take trig and then the algebra and the trig together after that they should be able to take calculus but um but we'll see because in high school they took algebra they took pre-calculus they took calculus but i know high school is a different level than college so so we'll see and and his their sat scores are pretty good but efsc on their chart for SAT scores compared to what class you're taking, they stop. I think they stop at algebra or something like that, algebra or trig. They don't go further than that. And the SAT scores that they show on the EFSC charts are not the same scoring system that 
that this kid's SAT scores are in because they're showing the SAT score as a two-digit number. And I'm pretty sure Talon's SAT score is like a four-digit number. So, so I don't know. Like, I can't make sense of that. So, so we'll have to talk to an advisor, find out where they can start, figure out what math class, and then um, also probably take um, a college physics class. And if that's too much, then um, something else. They're also going to need to take. Um, they're also going to need to take a foreign language class. So maybe they'll just take one or the other. The the <clears throat> math class or the science class probably the math because I think you have to have calculus before you can take college um, physics so math class and um, foreign language class and then the next term they could take physics class and the other foreign language class something like that that's what I'm thinking because because they only have the summer left so and they want to be in a physics degree and physics degrees physics degrees engineering degrees computer degrees they all require a lot of math and a lot of physics and almost all the degrees require calculus one two and three analytical geometry um, and physics one two and three and some of them require other science classes like one and two of biology or something like that or chemistry depending on the degree so so I know that they are going to need to get a jump on that so that's probably what they're going to be covering um, I think that's all oh yeah high school registration is also next week so hopefully I will be feeling much better and I won't be contagious and we can take Talon to their high school registration and make sure that whatever they're signed up for in high school is not overlapping whatever they're going to be signed up for for um, dual enrollment college which usually happens anyway so we have to have them change a couple of the classes it is a thing but we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, that's um, Wednesday. They have earlier hours, I think up to 4 or 4.30 or something like that. And then Thursday, they have um, later hours, so after 4 or 4.30 <coughs> for registration. And they said that you can also, um, we're too late to do like uh, pre-registration, but they said you can pick up the registration packet and fill it out at home and then bring it in on registration so if I am not if I am negative and I don't seem to be contagious and I don't seem to have symptoms then I might go in on Monday or Tuesday and pick up the blank um, forms if not then I will just come in on Wednesday or Thursday when things are better and uh, and just fill out the stuff then or I'll try to bring Craig with me if if I can and have him fill out stuff because Craig has a lot better handwriting than I do I have awful handwriting really really awful handwriting and I also don't write fast so so it causes this double whammy of me just taking forever trying to write somewhat decent and um, sometimes erasing stuff or messing stuff up and you know it would just be so much easier if I have somebody with nice pretty handwriting that writes quickly and um, and gets this done all nicely without having my horrific handwriting on everything but I am usually the one that does that stuff even though I am the one with slow writing and bad handwriting I said I would talk about selecting my new phone for um, August for my birthday, but I also have a annual checkup coming up. Now there's several things that I want to check on because I found out that there are vaccinations for meningitis and pneumonia, okay? And meningitis 
I don't want to mess with. Meningitis, the kind of meningitis I'm thinking of, is dangerous. It works very quickly and it can kill you. And it can kill you very quickly. And and I, I met a person that died from that. Like, huh, this is a little emotional for me, but back when I was substituting in public schools, one of the sixth graders that I was um, subbing with, it was like that day I subbed them, you know, and they were good, you know, they were a good kid, and they, you know, at least what a little, little bit that you could garner from them in one in one day of subbing and it was like two days later they had died from meningitis they woke up in the morning they didn't feel quite right they went to the hospital and they died in the hospital within like hours within hours so so that's something I've Ever since learning about that, it's been on my mind, and I did start hearing um, pediatricians talking about stuff for meningitis. And so, whenever I hear about it, I'm like, yes, please, you know, please give my kids these vaccines. I don't want them dying from meningitis. And now I know that there is there is a meningitis vaccine for adults and for kids for this specific type of meningitis and um, so I want to ask about that and see if I can get that and the pneumonia vaccine I have a history with pneumonia a very uncomfortable horrible history I I get these kinds of um, viruses like the like COVID uh, respiratory viruses and what tends to happen <clears throat> is that I get congestion, the congestion sets in, and that gunk in there in my chest ends up getting infected. And I end up with pneumonia or bronchitis or something to that effect. And I end up having to go into the, into the hospital or the clinic and I end up just like completely miserable and having to go through all these treatments and all this awful stuff and barely being able to breathe. and. And another thing that, oh my gosh, whenever I get pneumonia, it leaves this nasty, nasty smell and, and flavor, this flavor in my throat and this nasty, nasty smell from the phlegm and it just brings back such horrific memories and <laughs> this medicine that they're giving me for COVID, it leaves an aftertaste. It's not like that smell, but it still reminds me of it somehow. And so that kind of sucks. But um, whenever I drink, whenever I drink coffee, pretty much anything that has any flavor at all will kind of like cover up that, that aftertaste. I even intentionally was taking these throat lozenges. These things um, they gave me, they're, um, they're a lot stronger than those little candy things that you get from the um, pharmacy or whatever over the counter. And, um, and they last a lot longer. I was intentionally taking them even though my coughing has been a lot better and my throat has felt a lot better. I was intentionally taking them just to mask that aftertaste <laughs> so, but yeah that's another thing is that that the, just the memory of that smell that awful smell and that awful aftertaste from all the post nasal drip and and everything else awful and now i know there's a pneumonia vaccine and So I'm definitely, definitely hoping that I can get that. I, I mean, this is one of the reasons that I'm considered high risk with COVID. This is one of the reasons that I am, um, uh, what do you call it? 
I don't know. Like I, I'm just, I'm just high risk for these respiratory infections. So, so getting a pneumonia vaccine sounds like a fabulous idea to me. Okay. And then I have some other personal issues. I have to have them check out. Um, and my eyes definitely need a new prescription because they are getting so bad that that I can't read things like this. I can I can read it right here, but then the little stuff I definitely can't read. And then this stuff down back here where it tells you if you can um if you need to take it with food or whatever like that, a lot of times I can't read those at all. Um, and driving, I can't read the street signs until I'm like right up there on them. So I need to get my eyes checked again and get a new prescription. Um, both my near and farsightedness is a, is a problem. It used to be like the smallest prescription and and like I said, now it's bad enough that I can't read these signs and 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 labels and stuff so it's been problematic um i was trying to fix uh i was trying to fix a piece of clothing earlier today and i needed to be able to see the threads to trim the threads so that i could um uh open up the seam a little bit and i couldn't see the freaking threads obviously like if i can't see this how am i going to see little threads it was a problem um, also, my ears are getting bad enough, like, just so much, so many times where I have to say, what, what did you say, what did you say, and it's been a problem for years, but now it's, it definitely seems worse, it seems like it's happening more and more, so, so I gotta have that done, and because my birthday's in August, I'm supposed to set the appointment up for August, so. So I'll, I'll need to do that very soon and get all this stuff done. And and I intentionally made the list because every time I go in for a freaking checkup, I forget this stuff. I'll like, I will remember to talk about the most pressing thing, whatever is most bothering me, and I will forget everything else. So I've intentionally made a list of, <laughs> of all the things so that I... I don't so that I go in there and I don't forget what it is that um, that I need to talk about um gosh I think that's it I think oh no I didn't talk about the phone okay so so I have uh, this I think it's called an axon ion or a axon ion or ion axon or something like that and it has been a fabulous phone. This phone has forward, forward facing speakers. It has good camera and, and it's, it's quite a few years old, but just really good sound because I can't hear very well. I need something like that. I need it to not be distorted. I need it to be not uh, nice and clear and I need it to have really good sound and to be nice and loud. And some cell phones are just so muted that I can barely hear anything going on on them, even fully maxed out, even with the volume fully maxed out. And um, one of them I got, uh, one of them I had, I got uh, one of those earbud things that goes right here. It's like this or whatever. It goes here that was supposed to be for it and it didn't work for most of the stuff that I needed it to work for which defeated the complete purpose and made it so that I still couldn't freaking hear the freaking calls that were coming in on my phone sorry for all the freakings I do uh, I do not always have the most pretty flowery language coming out of my mouth but but yeah this this had really good volume so if any of you know any kind of um, phone that isn't like extremely horrifically priced has a good sound system um, I have not found um, a lot of phones with forward-facing speakers if you know of some let me know if you know of some that just 
they're known for having a good sound system, a good, you know, free sound system. Because even if I were to get um, earbuds or headphones that actually work good, I they irritate my ears, so I don't like to have them in my ears for very long. So it's not a good long-term option. So if you know of one, it's another one. Well, I'll, I'll do it on my phone again. Oh look, Charity's on. Hi, Charity. I don't know, but I'd go on any to see some of Alaska. My oldest two have fa family up there. Craig has an uncle that's been living up in Alaska for a while, and we have cousins. So, I put any ideas for a new smartphone with good sound and volume. So, both the volume needs to be nice and loud, and the sound needs to be nice and clear. So, any ideas? Put it in the comment section and that of course is my husband craig that was zach, just there zach, zach's home, ready for shows. okay zach is home ready for shows um and i think i'm done um let me real quick like go through this list and make sure i didn't miss anything keep an eye out for my videos which will be on youtube um and when you're on my youtube go ahead and you know like and subscribe you'll get You'll get notifications when I put something new up there. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the um, streams work. And especially when, like this week, I'm not streaming on YouTube. But when I do stream on YouTube, I think that, I think it may send out notifications to people who have subscribed. But I'm not 100% sure. Um, my understanding is that it's not very searchable. Um, I do try to put my stream, I do try to recategorize my streams into playlists so that um, hopefully they can come up that way. I don't know if that really works, but, but I try. I try. And that's all I can do. Oh, look. And because I had this um, a screen, this listing of my outline on on my uh, monitor the whole time, it was basically covering up this full size, <laughs> this full size comment section. And I could have been seeing Charity's comments as soon as she made them, but I had it all covered up. So let's see. Um, okay, I linked to London Dairy. I asked about a good sized cruise ship, and um, Charity commented on that. Um, I th think I talked about my COVID, and she says it happens and to keep positive. Okay, um, <laughs> apparently Craig was on there, and Charity said hi to Craig. So I didn't even see that when I was on there, but anyway. And then I posted my, oh, I posted my question with an exclamation. I'll go on there later and change the exclamation mark to um, a question mark, but that's okay. Anyway, everybody, have a good rest of the week or weekend or whatever, and I'll see you back next Friday, or you can come and check out whatever I'm putting out on YouTube or whatever I'm putting on um, Facebook videos and stuff. Bye!